What's up guys, in this video I'll be introducing you to particle systems and by the end of the video you should have some kind of badass torch like you can see on the screen. If you're new to my channel and you're just dropping in on this video, I'm a game developer currently putting out Unreal Engine 4 and Blender content to help my viewers. If you have any tutorial requests or you see anything on this list of topics that I'm covering that you're interested in, it would be so awesome if you dropped a sub. It really supports me putting out content. If you're just here for some quick knowledge on what I'm covering today, that's also cool. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the video. 500 subscribers guys, wow, thank you so much. I honestly never thought I'd get to this point. You guys have blown me away with the amount of support you've been giving. Thank you again. And I've, I've heard your comments on this mic volume. I've just downloaded this software now, so hopefully this mic is giving some good quality. And yeah, let's jump into this video on particle systems. Let's go. So, what actually is a particle system? This is one, this is one, and this is one. So you can think of a particle system as a sort of special effect which can be spawned and destroyed basically to make your game look more exciting. So for this video I'm going to show you how to make one and then show you some examples which you can copy just like the material episode. Trying to be a bit more organised this time, let's right click and create a new folder. Call this particle system or oh, no, that's spaces. particle system or whatever you want. Go into it and then right click and then create particle system call this whatever you want or you can call it torchlight. Okay, so double click to open it up and let me explain what's going on here. Here we have the viewport, this is what your particle system looks like, these are all the particles here. Uh, if you look in the bottom right you'll see two numbers, the one on the left is the number of particles being spawned and the number on the right is the maximum number of particles that can be spawned based on your settings. Here's the details panel, this is basically certain settings you can change within the particle system. Emitters here, this is actually how you build your particle system. Each one of these settings will impact your particle system and what it looks like, what it does, its speed, etc. The curve editor, you don't really need to worry about this, but this is how you change values over time. So instead, of, if we wanted to change the velocity, instead of setting it to a set number, you can actually gradually increase it with a curve. But don't really worry about this for now. And at the top we have the toolbar. Again, nothing really here you need to worry about. If you want to change the background colour so you can see your particle system, you can do that here. If you want to restart your particle system, you can do that here or here and then save. But don't worry about that too much. The only thing I really want you to worry about at the moment is these settings. There are loads of different settings. If you right click and then look at all these different drop downs, there is loads of different things you can apply to your particles. I'm just going to explain these for now but you gradually pick up different settings as you try and do different things. It's a learning process, there's no way you can watch a video and learn them all in once, you just need to learn them over time. So I'm going to begin by explaining these and then we'll work on editing them. So required, this is like the base particle, what the particle is. So you can change what the particle looks like by changing the material here. There are loads of different settings, but you don't really need to know half of them to create basic particle systems. Just worry about changing what the particle looks like here. Spawn is how many spawn, so if you click the drop down on distribution, then click another arrow, you can change how many spawn here. Lifetime is how long the particles will live for before they die. Initial size is their initial size. Initial velocity is their velocity, so how quick they're moving. And color over life is how their color can change over light, over time. So to change what the particle looks like, we need to go into required. And you'll notice that it's actually a material that we need to change, it's not a 3D mesh. So if you go back onto your main, main menu, go onto materials, then right click and then create a new material, just call this particle mat, then open it up. When it comes to materials for particles, it's exactly the same as normal materials, but it needs an emissive colour. So if we go onto the main particle block here, and change the blend mode to translucent, we actually get rid of a few nodes that we don't need. And we've got emissive color and opacity, which is the main two we're gonna be working with. So what we'd, what we'd usually do, right, to create a simple material is create a constant, then create a material, and then plug that in. This would work, it would, um, in your particle system, when you plug this in, it would be showing pink squares, which is what we've actually told it to do. 
but we actually cut off certain features like colour over life because it's already got a colour, it's not a flexible thing you can change. So what we actually need to do is bring in particle colour. So what this particle colour is actually doing is basically saying, okay, we've got a colour here, we're not going to deal with it, you guys in the particle system, you can change it using colour over life and certain things like that. So if you go onto your material, click apply, then go back onto a particle system, under required, under material, put in your newly made material. So after the material is finished compiling, you will see your material. And if you go into colour of life, if you've changed this so far, you will notice that your material is changing colour over time. So we're going to start with changing colour over life and I can explain to you the different ways we can actually change all of these settings. The first option we have is distribution constant. This is where you want one of your settings to be just one value and stay that, that value the whole time. So if we change this to green, we have a constant colour of green. The next setting, distribution constant curve, is where you want your colour to change over time. This is what this curve editor helps you do. So if you go into points at one point, you will see lots of things which is probably confusing you, but it's actually really simple. So the in value is the time. So at zero seconds, we want it to spawn this color. Then if we add another element, and then we put one second, and then change this to some kind of blue, we will see that at one second, it changes to blue. So it starts at zero seconds at cyan, then changes to blue at around one second. These settings here, arrive tangent, leave tangent, and interp mode, you don't really need to worry about. That's just how the materials uh, blend over to the next material. We then have distribution uniform. This is when you want your settings to be either one thing or either another thing. So if we put the max as cyan, and then we put the min at blue, you will see the colors are varying between the cyan and blue. And then finally, we have distribution uniform curve. Just like the constant curve, this is where we change the color over time, but it can be either one value or another value. So if we just do the same thing here, do cyan and blue, the values are either cyan or blue or in between that. Then if we add another point and change this to red, rose and then orange, and then change the time to two seconds, the colors start at either cyan or blue or in between, and then they transition to rose or yellow or in between. So it's a way of changing color over life, but it's a more random way. So the very last thing that I don't want you to worry about at all, but I think it's worth mentioning, is distribution particle parameter. This is to do with parameters, basically. So if you convert, if you make something in your material and then convert it to parameter, this is a way of editing that parameter, but don't worry about that. So now that's all explained, let's change this color over life to create a torch looking color. So make sure you're on distribution constant curve because we want to change the color over time, but we don't want it between random uh, colors, we want set colors. So create three array elements. So first we're going to do the timings. Actually, we're, we're going to do a negative number. That will just start it a little bit earlier. Then for point for value one, we're going to do point three, then for value 2, we're going to do point 8. So now, for the first one, for the out value, we're just going to set this to white. For value 1, we're going to set this to an orangey kind of colour, a sort of flame looking colour. And then for value 2, we're going to turn this to red. And you can already see that's kind of forming into that fire that we kind of want. Uh, maybe change this to 0.2. Next, we're going to change the spawn to 50. Then we're going to change the lifetime to between 1 and 1.5. Next, we're going to change the size. We're going to change this to vector uniform. 
So uh, uniforms are a really good one for size because you might want the meshes between different sizes. Um, it's not such a good one for color because you kind of want specific colors. So we're going to set the maximum size to 10 in the X, 10 in the Y and 10 in the Z and the minimum to 3. Okay, now we'll change the velocity. So they're going up a bit too much. So let's change the max Z to 50 and let's change the minimum to 40. Okay, the next thing we're gonna add is a sphere setting. So if you go right click under location, sphere. What the sphere setting does is actually it spawns the particles in the shape of a sphere. So if you go onto velocity and un uncheck the tick, you'll see they're in the shape of a circle sphere. So we don't want this sphere as big, we just want to have a small amount of randomness. So if you go under constant, change this to seven or something, and now you can really see a bit more of a random fire effect. So add sphere when you want to mix up, mix things up a little bit, get it a little bit more random than that scripted location. So one more thing we can do to this is actually get the particles to fade out. We do this by going back into the material. We can then plug the alpha node into the opacity, go back onto our particle system, go under color over life, and then take a look at the alpha over life section. So as we plug the alpha into opacity in the material, and color over life lets us change alpha, that means we can change the opacity using this section here. So if you open up the constant curve, what it's already doing is at zero seconds it, the opacity is one, and then at one second the opacity is zero. So it's already fading this out for us. If this isn't working for you, make sure in your material that you've clicked apply so it's all updated. And the only thing I'm gonna change about this is in color of life for value one, I'm gonna put 1.2. Uh, because the particles are living for between one and 1.5 seconds, I kinda of want a little bit of a later fade out. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much done with it. So go back onto your map, drag it into your level and see what it looks like. Uh, obviously when it's in your level you can get a better idea of if you need, need to tweak anything at all. Um, it's looking a little bit crazy at the moment so maybe we'll go into velocity and just turn these values down a little bit to minus 5 and then 25. So it's looking pretty good at the moment. If you take a closer look you'll actually notice we're spawning lots of little squares. That's great if you're going for this style of game but what if you wanted to spawn the particles as a different shape? To do this we actually know, need to go back into our material and take a look at the opacity. If you remember back to the material episode, we used a texture and plugged the alpha into the opacity to remove the background. The way this works in its simplest form is because every image is made up of four channels, red, green, blue and alpha. Red, green and blue which make up the actual image and alpha which makes up the rest of the image such as background. This means if we plug the alpha into opacity, we are subtracting the alpha background from the image. We can use this same technique to change the shape of our particle material. Click the link in the description to download some PNG images I've made for you. Or you can just make your own by opening an image, removing the background, and then saving it as a PNG. Create a folder called textures and import the downloaded files. Once you've done this, go back onto your particle material and create a texture by holding T and clicking. Then select one of your newly downloaded textures and plug the alpha into the opacity. You will now notice that the background of your texture has been subtracted from your material. Click apply then go back onto your level to see your new and improved particle systems. But you'll notice that they're no longer fading out. This is because, as mentioned earlier, the particle color is the only thing that can be changed inside the particle system. This means as the texture sample is plugged into opacity, the opacity can no longer be changed to fade out. To fix this, we need to combine the alphas of both of these using a multiply node. I know it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but multiplying basically combines two different nodes. So by applying these two, it will still subtract the background, but it will go through the particle color, which can be changed in the particle system. So plug that in, click apply and now you will see your new shape and it's still fading out. So guys, that is it for today. Play around with your particle system, try and make it better than mine. 
Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to do any examples today, but if you want to learn more, go on to the starter content, go under particles and take a look at the particle systems that are provided by Unreal Engine. If you go onto them, you can see how they're made, you can change them around and you can make your own off them. One more thing I forgot to mention, you can have different layers of particle system. So each of these is a different layer. To make a new layer, you right click. And that is pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Tomorrow with, or next time we're doing lighting. I'm not sure if it'll be tomorrow, but we're gonna make it start to look really cool. Just like you saw at the start of the video. So thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.